So in the last part, we left off being able to um, receive messages from Facebook. So whenever Facebook sent us a message, uh, we'd be able to take it from our bot and we can see here's the message here uh, and we've stored that in a file. So what we're going to do today is we're going to be responding to messages from Facebook. So we're just going to do a really simple, um, if Facebook sent us a message, we're going to reply to it with um, a standard response no matter what the message is. So the first thing we want to do is we want to get the sender's ID, which is the ID of the person who sent the message to us. The recipient ID is the ID of our Facebook page, but we only want the sender's ID because that's the ID we want to reply to. Then we want to get the text that they sent us. That's not going to be relevant in this tutorial because we're not really going to be focusing on what they sent. We're just going to be focused on replying no matter what message was sent. So the first thing we have to do is we have to read the contents of fb.txt. So the way we do that is we just say uh, Facebook is equal to file get contents facebook.txt and um, because uh, when we refresh the page we're sending another get request uh, which is going to um, show up in the PHP input and is then therefore going to overwrite this page with nothing because there's not actually anything being displayed uh, we have to just uh, comment this out just temporarily while we're uh, working on the rest of the script so we have that there in the Facebook variable we can just say um, echo Facebook and uh, we'll just save that and refresh this. You can see here it is here. Here is our JSON from Facebook. I'm just going to put in some pre-tags just so that we can uh, see our JSON better. Whoops, can't type. There we go. Uh, we're going to save that and we're going to refresh this. So now what we want to do is we're going to uh, go into the JSON and we're going to get the sender ID. So the way we do that is we can use the PHP JSON decode function to decode this JSON into an array. So we're just going to say Facebook is equal to JSON decode Facebook. And then what we're going to say is echo Facebook again. And let's just see what we get. We'll probably just get array uh, printed out to us. So now that we have our JSON decoded into an array, if I was to just print R on that array, and let's see what we get. So you can see we get an object, a PHP object, with um, an attribute called entry. Then we have a zeroth uh, index, which is the zeroth index in this entry array within the object. And then if we go into the zeroth, in, uh, the zeroth index, we can access the ID of the message, the time it was sent, and then we can access another array called messaging, uh, and then the zeroth index of that, and then we can get to sender, and then the ID. So it's actually quite, uh, it looks complicated, but it's not too bad at all. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go into entry, and then we're going to go all the way into ID to find the ID of the message. So the way we do that is we say echo, whoops, we say echo Facebook which is our whole object, then we say entry, which means now we're on this array. Then we get the zeroth index of this array, and then within the array, within that index in the array, we get the ID. So the way we do that is we go back to our uh, editor, we use the array operator, we put in zero to get the zeroth uh, item, and then we say ID to get that attribute. So we just refresh, you can see here is the ID, we've just got it up here now. And now we're going to go into messaging and we're going to go into sender after that. So we're going to go into um, messaging. Then we're going to get the zeroth index of that, which is here. Then we're going to go into sender and then we're going to go into ID. So this should be the ID of the person who sent the message. Okay, so the reason that didn't work is because we have... Uh, we didn't put the operator in properly. So here is the ID of the person who sent the message to us, as you can see here. So that's the most important thing we need for this tutorial. So after that, we have, uh, this is our ID here. So we're just going to store this in a variable, call it uh, recipient ID. Or we'll actually just call it our ID for, to make it shorter. And now we have the ID, now we can reply to the message. And we need to use the file get contents function to uh, send a request to Facebook. So we say file get contents. 
and the URL we want to pass it is this URL here. If we go back to the Facebook guide, this is the URL that we want to pass uh, to Facebook. This is the URL we access to actually send a message to the Facebook API. So we just paste this in here and you can see this is where we put in our page access token. So I'm just going to create a variable, call it token. And up, up here I'm going to create another variable, call it token. And I'm going to go back to Facebook and I'm going to get my access token here. I have the access token in the clipboard, I'm going to paste it in. There's the access token there. Before we, this, if we tried to access Facebook using this, we wouldn't actually be able to send them a message because we wouldn't actually be able to send them any, any JSON data to actually tell them what message to send. You can see if we go to the guide, this is what Facebook wants us to send them. It wants us to send them some JSON and it wants us to tell them the recipient's ID and the message we want to send and then we send it to this address. So the way we do that is we go back to the file get contents function. The first thing we do is we add another parameter. We just write false, it's not important. And then we put another parameter called context. And this allows us to send uh, data in the body of our request. So in a file get contents, not only we just send a get request as we did up here, and that sends a get request uh, to the server and then the server responds back uh, with um, the file we asked for. But since we're sending a post request, uh, and we're trying to send uh, data within the request, we need to send some context, which is going to be the uh, data we're sending, the headers, and the type of request we want to send. So the way we do that is uh, we first, I'm going to actually un uh, just delete the pre-tags just because they're getting in the way um, and they're not actually important. I'm going to delete the print R because we've got everything we need to get. And down here is where I'm going to create the context. So context is just uh, a variable that is equal to the return value of this PHP function. The function is called stream context create, and it takes the parameter um, of the things we want to send, so the data we want to send, the headers, and the uh, type of request we want to send. So we're just going to create another variable called that options. So we don't really need to worry about too much about this function itself. Just know that you need to use this function to create um, context to supply it to the file get contents function. So above um, the context, we're going to uh, supply it with the options such as the data uh, and the headers and things like that. So we create a variable called options and we set it equal to an array and the array is going to hold some uh, information we need to uh, pass to the file get contents function. So the first thing we need to tell the file get contents function is what type of protocol we're going to use. And we're going to use HTTP. So what we're going to do is we're going to supply our array with one value and we're going to call it HTTP. And that value is going to be equal to an array and the array is going to hold everything like our data and our headers and things like that. And we actually want to get rid of that semicolon. So uh, the first thing we're going to supply is the method of the request which is going to be post. So we say method is equal to post and what we're doing is creating an associative array. So instead of using numbers to identify the values in the array, uh, we're using uh, strings. The next thing we're going to send is the content, which is going to just be content and that is going to be equal to our JSON. So because we're going to, um, instead of just sending a string, we're going to create an array. So we're going to say JSON encode to encode our array into JSON, uh, a JSON string, and we're going to pass it an array called data, which is going to be, whoops, which is going to be where we uh, put our data. Then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, tell it what headers to send, which is going to be header, and then we're going to tell it uh, the string we want to send. So if we go back to Facebook, we can see here is the header they want you to send. It is just to tell their API that we're sending them JSON. And we just paste that in there. We can add a new line if we like, and there we have it. There is our um, our options all created. The only thing left to do now is to supply the data to the actual Facebook API. So the way we do that is we say data is equal to an array, and this array is going to be um, encoded into JSON. So we have to follow the JSON structure. So if we go back to Facebook's guide, you can see that we have recipient here and we have message here. But within recipient, we have um, a value called ID. 
and within message we have another value called text but as you can see the way this is modeled in PHP would be an array called recipient which has um, one item called ID and then the value of ID is the user ID and then we have another array called message and we have one item in message called text and the value of that item is the value of the string we want to send. So if that doesn't make any sense, it'll hopefully make some sense in a second. So uh, the first thing we have to do is within our array is we have to create two more arrays. So the first thing we're going to write is recipient. And that is going to be equal to an associative array. And that array is going to have one, whoops, one value. That's called ID. And that's going to be equal to the user ID, which is what we got over here, and we called it RID. Then we want to create another array, and that's going to be called uh, message. Uh, and that's going to be equal to another associative array. And that new array is going to hold one value called text. And the value of that text is going to be the value of the message we want to send. So what we're just going to write here is something like uh, nice to meet you. And that's what our uh, bot is going to send back to Facebook whenever somebody sends our bot a message. So that's everything uh, so far that we need. So if we just save this and we just go back here and we send our bot a message. Say for example we send it hello world. Okay so let's just go back see why that didn't work. And it looks like, yeah, we had a syntax error here. We just refresh, or we just save this. So if we go uh, to our bot itself and refresh, you can see it's just a white screen. And if we actually load this, it's um, not going to change. So the first thing we have to actually do is uncomment this line here because we have to actually store the data we get from Facebook's request when they actually message us to ask uh, our bot a question and then our bot can respond. But as you can see, uh, if we just were to refresh the page, Facebook wouldn't actually be sending us any requests, which means if we were to try to uh, decipher what that Facebook request was and get the user ID from it, we wouldn't actually get one because we would just have a blank, um, a blank message. We wouldn't actually have any ID stored within it. So we have to save this, and then we go back to Facebook and we type in "Hello World," and we have to actually message, uh, the contact the bot through Facebook. Okay, so the reason our bot wasn't working was just because uh, we had single quotes here instead of double quotes. So let's just save that and let's hello our link in. As you can see, now our bot has responded. It says, nice to meet you. We could really easily just ran randomize the, the uh, replies. We could just say something like, um, pass in a variable called replies. And then up here, just put in replies is equal to an array and actually we'll just say rand and we'll say zero to say five and in here we'll just put in five replies actually we want to put in four because that will have five replies so let's just say um the first one is going to be So we can just send something uh, simple like this and what it will do is each one of these items in the array will have an index so this will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and what we're doing is we're just passing in um, a random uh, array and we actually need to pass in the array itself so we'll say replies and then we'll just pass in a random uh, value for the index of the array. So hopefully if we just save the changes and message the bot again say uh, my name is Francis. Hopefully the bot will reply and says enjoy the bot. Uh, so we could say something else, say um, just a letter H again and let's see what it says. It says how are you again. So uh, as you can see sometimes the bot seems to reply twice. Uh, as far as I'm aware this is probably a bug with Facebook uh, and not with our actual code. It could just be maybe Facebook's um, responding to our request. So for example, if we message Facebook, uh, Facebook will send that message to us uh, at our callback. 
and then uh, our callback will send a message to Facebook and what probably happens is Facebook replies once more to say that uh, the message was sent successfully or something like that which would run our callback again and cause this to be um, set cause the message to be sent twice uh, but I will look into that but either way hope you enjoyed this tutorial don't forget to like comment favorite and subscribe and I'll see you next time